Hey Web World, Scotty D. Welcome to another episode of the Comic Book Curator. And today's episode is very special because it is by request of you in the community who have asked me over the past couple of months to show you what is in my comic book grading toolkit. So that's what we're going to talk about today. It's just going to be you and me in a real casual hangout kind of fashion, walking through each element in my toolkit and showing you what I use, why I use it, and how I use it. Uh, by no means is this a perfect toolkit. Uh, I'll just preface that up front. Um, if you have a toolkit that you've built up and you have different elements in your toolkit, I'd love to hear what you use. Comment in the comment thread below. If you think that I could be using things more effectively, I'd love to hear your comments on this. Comment in the thread below. Uh, also, if you are starting out fresh, and you are building your toolkit, don't spend a lot of money on the elements in your toolkit. Um, I've probably spent right around $30, $35 total for all of the items in my toolkit, and that's probably being very generous. So let's just jump right in and talk about all of the elements in my comic book grading toolkit. Uh, first and foremost, if you are going to grade comics, you're going to need an area by which is super flat, well lit, and super clean. Um, my desk is big. I've got a big L-shaped desk here in my office. And this area over on the desk is filled with computer equipment, audio equipment, camera equipment, and it just is not conducive to grading comic books. But this area of my desk has a lot of open real estate on it. I have a desk lamp on it. Uh, it's surrounded by ambient light as well uh, that I have uh, lit here in my office. Uh, so this is where I typically grade my comic books right here. Now, the challenge with this area is it's where I typically keep my coffee cup. And there's sometimes there's coffee rings left on the table. Uh, if I have snacks, here in the office while I'm working. Uh, there may be crumbs and whatnot. So you need to make sure that your area is super clean. And I do that every single time before I grade my comic books. Um, I don't use standard cleaners. Why, you might ask. Uh, well, standard cleaners have detergents in them and they have fragrances in them. Both of these items will leave a thin film of residue on the surface. Even if you can't see it, it's there. And you never want to take a chance of that residue transferring into the paper of your comic book. So the first thing that I would suggest is never use standard cleaners to clean the surface of the area by which you're going to grade your comics in. I went back to my days in radio where we had to clean the equipment on a regular basis and it couldn't have residue or perfumes on it because it would affect the audio playback of the media that was played through them. So what did we use? We used isopropyl alcohol. This evaporates quickly, it cleans beautifully, and it leaves zero residue on the surface by which you're cleaning. You can clean it with a paper towel first. That's what I do. I'll get the isopropyl alcohol, I'll pour it onto the paper towel, and I'll clean the surface thoroughly. I'll move things out of the way, make sure that there's no dust or debris or stains or anything on the surface with that isopropyl alcohol and the paper towel. After I get it clean with that, I go back over the surface with a microfiber cloth. You don't have to go out and spend a lot of money on either one of these materials. You might even have isopropyl alcohol in your medicine cabinet right now. Um, if you don't, you can get it down at a dollar store for a buck. The microfiber cloth that I use is made for optical glasses. It's a small little square. Um, I get it when I get my glasses from my optician, and it's in my glass case. Uh, so when I'm ready to clean the surface, I get my my uh, microfiber cloth afterwards, and I wipe the surface down and make sure that all of the lint is picked up. And that's the biggest thing you want to do after you get it clean with the isopropyl alcohol 
is get all of the lint that the paper towel might have left behind. I know it seems extreme because you're like, hey, that's just a little piece of lint. It's not going to hurt the comic book. Well, you know what? I don't want to chance it. I want my surface completely sterile from any garbage, any stains, any debris, any uh, fragrances, anything that might have found itself onto the surface area. I want it completely clean. I want this like an operating room. Um, so that's the first thing that I could recommend to you. Isopropyl alcohol, paper towels, and a microfiber cloth. Put those in your, your toolkit. You don't have to keep the isopropyl alcohol with your toolkit. You can use what you have in your medicine cabinet. Just pull it out when you're ready to clean the surface and you're off to the races. Now, despite how smart you think you might, uh, might be, um, you can't remember everything that could be deemed as a defect in grading comics. Um, so I recommend getting an official guide. This is the Overstreet Guide to Grading Comics. Uh, it supersedes all of the third-party grading companies. This is the fifth edition. I started using this guide with the fourth edition. Um, I love it. I did a complete walkthrough, side-by-side -side comparison of the fourth edition to the fifth edition. You can find that video in the comic book collecting playlist here on my channel. Uh, this book is your Bible when it comes to grading comics because it gives you all of the details, what is allowed, what's not allowed, how many defects are allowed within a certain grade. You need to understand that it, it, like the back of your hand. And there is a lot of material in this that you, I don't care how smart you are. You can't remember everything. So you need a reference guide by which to go back and look at. I can tell you when I'm grading my comics, I have this book open on this side of my desk. I have it opened up and I get to an area uh, of, of the comic that I think that it's probably right in that area. And then I can start to look at the defects and go, oh, wait, no, nope, it, it's either a little bit lower or it's a little bit higher. You need this guide. Uh, MSRP on this guide, $24.95. So this is the most expensive thing I have in my comic book grading toolkit is this guide right here. So get one for yourself. I'll put a link in the video description below where you can get it. Um, the next item is a tool that a lot of people don't use anymore. In fact, even Overstreet doesn't look at it as kind of a primary tool anymore. But if you collect Golden Age, Silver Age, um, Bronze Age, uh, you need to have a way by which to look at that newsprint paper that is in those older comics and figure out how white is the paper. Because newsprint white is not the same as bleached white paper that you use in either a photocopier today or an inkjet printer or a laser printer. The white level of that paper is different than the, the paper uh, that is in a comic book. So you need to get yourself an owl card. This is from Overstreet. This is the owl card right here. I bought this from the Overstreet website. It's not entirely cheap for a single card. I think I paid a couple of bucks for this, but I wanted a way by which to look at the whiteness level of a comic book and have a foundation by which to compare it to. Again, just like you have the guide, you need to have a guide for the paper as well. So this is the packaging that it comes in. It looks like an old uh, collector card uh, from baseball cards and whatnot. So I slit the, the lid open right here and I kept this material so that I can keep the card in pristine shape as well. So this is what the card looks like. It comes with uh, a little bit of instructions on the owl card itself, how to use the card and whatnot. And this is what the owl card looks like. And I can guarantee you that that white level of this card is different than the white of the paper in your printer today. So you can't look at your paper and go, yeah, that's white or that's off white and really be uh, on par with where it might be compared to the owl card. So get yourself one of these owl cards. Again, it's just a couple of bucks. You can see white, off white, tan, uh, brown, and brittle. And you can see each element of the owl card uh, and, and how to compare it when you're holding it up to a page of the comic book. 
The back of the card, not so useful anymore. It's a very dated grading scale system. It's kind of fun to look at, but this is the side that is the moneymaker as far as uh, using it when you're grading your comics. Get yourself an owl card, an Overstreet white uh, level card. That's what it is. Owl is Overstreet white level. So that's what I have. And again, I keep it with the instructions. I don't throw it away. Uh, and I keep it in its original packaging that it came in. So I just store that off to the side. And I use that any time that I'm grading a comic, even new comics. I'll look at them and go, hey, how does that compare to the uh, to the owl card? Uh, if it's uh, the whiteness of the paper is uh, of these brand new current age comics is in that range. Hey, then it's a white, you know, so use that owl card. When you're touching your comics, you don't want to use your bare hands. Uh, I don't care how clean you think they are. Uh, when you wash them with soap and water, guess what? Soap has detergents. Detergents leave residue. Residue can be transferred to the paper of your comic book. So when I grade comics, I use white cotton gloves. No joke. I wear these every single time that I grade my comics. Uh, I bought these for you know, a, a buck, I think it was. Uh, they're 100% cotton. And when I got them home, I had no idea how they were handled in the factory if they were washed with detergents, if they have residue on it from the machines that it ran through. So when I got my gloves home, I washed them. I put them in my clothes washer with just a little bit, maybe a drop or two of soap, uh, 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 fabric detergent. So put it in there by itself, nothing else. And I know it seems crazy to wash gloves by themselves and do an entire load of laundry just for some gloves. But I didn't want residue or any cross contamination to these gloves that are going to be that are going to be touching my comics. So you wash it with detergent and hot water. Now you're saying to yourself, "Wait a minute! You just said don't wash anything with residue." I did, but you need to get them clean first. You don't know what's on these things, so wash it with just a little bit of soap into a lot of water, hot water at that, and let it go through its entire cycle. When it's done with that cycle. Here's where the extreme cleaning comes into place. I ran these back through the wash four more times without soap, just hot water, and I ran these through four more times. Why did I do that? Because I want to make sure that all of the soap that I had introduced to the, co uh, to the cotton gloves when I was washing it for the very first time was completely washed out. And I need to have the peace of mind that it's rinsed thoroughly of any material that have made introduced to the uh, gloves when they're in the wash. I don't put them in the dryer when I'm done. Why? Well, I don't know about you, but when my clothes get washed and they go into the dryer, you throw a, a dryer sheet in, right? What is in that dryer sheet? It's a fabric softener. Guess what that is? A detergent. So the entire inside of your clothes dryer has a small filmed layer of detergent uh, of, from that fabric softener is coated on the inside of your dryer. Not going to have these near that. Remember, I washed it once with just a little bit of soap, a lot of hot water, and then I washed it and rinsed it four more times to get it super clean, and then I hang dry them. You're not going to have to do that a lot but you will have to do it for the very first time anytime you start to see soiling on your gloves from touching paper in the comic books because those, that paper is dirty, uh, especially if you get older comics. Uh, it will eventually start to you know, turn your gloves on at least the fingertips. You'll start to see some staining uh, from the, the, the garbage that comes out of the paper in those old comic books. Make sure you get your gloves to where they fit tight. They want to be snug on your hands. They want to almost be a second layer of skin to your hands. You don't want it to be loose like some garden gloves. You want these to be super tight on your hands so that you can get a grip on the comics as you're grading them. And sometimes you try to put them on and you've got them on wrong. So uh, there's all the finger holes and there's the thumb hole. All right. So here's my gloves. You can see the, the creases of my fingers when I'm folding my hands, you can see right there, you see the, the creases of my fingers. 
That's how tight these things are on my hands. 100% cotton. Super soft. Not going to damage the comics when I'm touching my comics and grading them. Especially if I'm grading somebody else's comics. I want to make sure that my area is sterile, my hands are sterile, so that I'm not introducing contaminants to the comic when I'm grading them. Again, make sure that they're super tight. If they get soiled at all, stained at all, throw them back through that five uh, cycle wash uh, uh, methodology that I talked about. They'll be super clean once again, and you'll be able to use them. Now, me, I don't have perfect eyes. Um, I wear glasses on my computer so I can like, see things uh, clear. I have glasses for distance. Uh, so suffice it to say, I don't have perfect eyes. Uh, even if you think you have perfect eyes, when you're grading a comic book, the defects could be so small that you might miss them without some form of magnification. Um, I picked up this magnifying glass at the dollar store. It is a glass magnifying glass and I paid a buck for it. Um, I wanted a glass magnifying glass because of the surface being uh, free of defects when the glass magnif magnification lens is made. Um, in plastic, sometimes you can get uh, defects in cheap material. Uh, so I wanted a nice, smooth, clean uh, magnification uh, lens, and I got this at the dollar store. Uh, really cheap. Again, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on building this toolkit. Um, but even though I have this, and I can get really close up to a comic and look at the defect, um, I wanted super magnification because when I grade comics, let me take these gloves off here. Um, I am super critical. I'm very conservative down to microscopic defects that I might find on, uh, on a comic. So I have these as well to complement the magnifying glass. These are 1.75 readers. Again, just a couple of bucks at your local uh, big box store. Um, I got these because the temple, uh, this is called the temple of the glasses if you don't wear glasses. Um, the temple is super thin, it's super light, it's flexible. Um, the lenses are small, but they're super magnification uh, of 1.75. So I can wear these for long periods of time without my head and my ears and my eyes getting fatigued when I'm looking at uh, comics and I'm grading them. So I'll put my, my magnification glasses on and they kind of disappear on the face because they're, they're rimless. And I, then I also use this and between the two of these, I can see some defects that even the naked eye can't see. And I will count those against the overall quantity of defects on the comic when I'm giving it its final grade. So get yourself a magnification glass, a uh, magnifying glass, get yourself some uh, magnifying readers. Um, they make stronger than 1.75. Um, these are the ones that I feel most comfortable with because between this and this, I can see very, very small defects on, on comics. So get yourself some magnifiers. Um, even with magnifiers uh, and your light that is in the area of your desk, over here I've got a desk lamp. You've seen that in the, uh, the section of the video where I was cleaning the, the desk off. Um, even though I've got a nice desk lamp here, it might cast a shadow and give me a false positive on an area that I think is a defect. Uh, so I need to get a closer look at that defect, that plausible defect, with really, really isolated light. So I picked up this as well. This is just a pen with an LED light on the end of it. This LED light is UV free, so uh, it's not introducing any UV light to the comic when I'm grading it, even if it's just for a, a few seconds or minutes. Uh, I don't want any UV light touching my comics or somebody else's comics. Every light bulb in my office is UV free. It's LED and they're UV free lights. This is a way for me to get really close on the comic, maybe on an angle and maybe around that defect with my, uh, with my readers on and the magnifying glass on and really get close and scrutinize that defect that I might find uh, to the nth degree. So get yourself a small little light that you can have in your kit too that will allow you to kind of 
analyze uh, a defect that you think is there and analyze it at a very uh, detailed, isolated uh, methodology. Uh, once you find a defect, you're going to need to measure it because the size of the defect affects the end grade that you are going to give to this comic book. So you need a ruler. Don't use wooden rulers. Wooden rulers might splinter. Uh, they might have cracks in them uh, where by which that can damage the comic book by snagging or hooking onto the pages, especially the older comics that are made out of that newsprint paper. Get yourself a nice acrylic uh, see-through ruler. I got this ruler at the dollar store. Again, you don't have to spend a lot of money on the tools in your toolkit. This ruler happens to have an added level of functionality. Not only can I see through the numbers when I have it on a paper, so let's just say that this is a comic book, I can put that over the comic, see the defect, and see the, the ruler measurements as well. But the center of this ruler acts as a magnifier. So as I'm over that defect, I can look at it through the center strip here and it'll be magnified even more. So get yourself an acrylic see-through ruler, a transparent ruler with good clear numbers on it that you can measure on and be able to figure out how big that defect is. And if you can find the ones with the magnifying strip here in the center, all the more better. Again, I found this at the dollar store. Not a whole lot of money in my toolkit. Now, when you are discovering defects too, one of the kind of ancillary side items I put in my, my toolkit just uh, on the, the, the premise that I might need to be able to move uh, that, that defect a little bit. Uh, if it truly is a defect, maybe chipping, uh, uh, flaking, uh, a tear, something that, that might be physical damage to a comic. Wearing the gloves sometimes, you can't get in there and get a good uh, feel on or be able to see what that defect is. So keep yourself some cotton swabs in your toolkit. Uh, they're soft. They're cheap. You can throw them away afterwards if they get dirty or, or uh, defected. You know, if the, the, the cotton material starts to peel off the top, no big deal. Toss it to the side. They're a couple of cents. Just keep a handful of these cotton swabs in your toolkit. I probably have maybe, you know, 10 or so here that I keep in my toolkit. And I also keep a set of tweezers. Now, I don't uh, go to using these a lot. The only time I ever use these is to maybe check staples. Uh, if I think that maybe their staple is loose or whatnot, I can get in there and grab that metal staple, that steel staple, and check it to see if it's if it's got a defect to it. Other than that, I don't typically use uh, the tweezers at all, but I have them at the ready in my toolkit. So that's everything. That's my entire comic book grading toolkit. And I'd love to know your comments, what you think of everything that you've seen here today from the guide to the owl card uh, to uh, the cotton gloves to the uh, magnifying readers to the magnifying glass uh, to the pin light to the ruler to the cotton swabs, to the tweezers, to how I clean the surface, drop a comment below. I'd love to see what you think of my grading toolkit. If you have a grading toolkit of your own and you have other tools that I don't have, drop a comment below. I'd love to know what you have in your toolkit because, hey, we're all here trying to help each other out, become better graders of our own comics and grading comics in general. And uh, hey, if we can help each other out, all the more better. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you kind of stumbled across this video and you're not yet subscribed to my channel, go on over there and click on the subscribe icon. It just takes a second. I appreciate it. Uh, share this video with other comic book fans that you know in your family and friends in your circles, uh, whatever. Share it with them. Maybe they're looking to build a, uh, a grading toolkit for themselves. Hopefully this will help them out as well. As always, comics should be enjoyed not encapsulated. Be positive to everybody. Life is too short. And until the next video, may the force be with you.